So, today we will have uh, a series of lectures on uh, structures. So, we uh, go back to, to the topic of uh, structures and we, um, we will present We will present um, another a different uh, typo uh, typology of um, uh, structures, which uh, we call tensegrity. So the tensegrity, what is tensegrity, I will explain. So uh, uh, the presentation is a... Uh, uh, split in a few parts, uh, motivation and background, parametric design of structures. Also, uh, there is also another part on the uh, design of solar energy harvesting structures, the continuum limits of tensegrity structures, conclusions and future work. So, uh, first we are, uh, uh, the motivation is uh, uh, about uh, uh, bridge en engineering, uh, which is a popular topic in uh, in uh, uh, civil engi structural engineering. So the bridges are usually bridges are divided in two main in several categories, but two main categories that we can uh, 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 mention are. Uh, substructure and superstructure bridges. So what do we, what we mean with that? A substructure bridge is a structure uh, such that the, the, the road uh, passes above the supporting structure. So the road is above the supporting structures. Typical uh, substructure bridges are the arch bridges with the uh, road going, uh, passing above the arch. Also in this category, there, then we have super, those are substructures, but we can have also superstructure bridges in which the supporting structures uh, is uh, uh, um, above the, uh, the road, the deck. So this is the deck, and the supporting structure is above the deck. And so we can have uh, also, uh, we have many examples of this other category. We want to investigate uh, bridges that are made of uh, uh, particular structures that are named tensegrity. We will see an example in uh, short. Uh, which is, later, we will 3D print uh, hopefully, uh, a sample. And those uh, structures are structures that are uh, made of uh, uh, two uh, different uh, kinds of elements. Some rigid bodies that are connected to each other through cables. And they are called tensegrity because the, the, the structure uh, is uh, freestanding uh, because of the fact that the cables are pre-stretched. So the, uh, in the freestanding configuration, the uh, stiffness of the structure arises from the uh, pre-stress of the cables. So imagine that you have a, a, a bunch of pieces that are uh, apart from each other. And you connect those pieces by cables in such a way you, you, you build a, a, a freestanding structure. That structure will be a tensegrity structure because <coughs> tensegrity means uh, a structure whose integrity is due to the tension of the cables that connect these rigid bodies. Okay. There are examples of uh, 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 tensegrity bridges uh, worldwide. This is uh, Kuripa Bridge, this is in Australia, Australia. 
And there are examples, though in those examples you can see there are some rigid elements and some cables that provide the structure of the bridge. Uh, this is a design in Rome, this is not an actual bridge. And uh, 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 there are uh, uh, real examples in Australia and in other uh, uh, parts of the world. And we can actually 3D print. We have been working on the 3D printing of tensegrity structure, which is not an easy topic. It's not an easy uh, goal. Because uh, mm, uh, this is a, another uh, is a particular uh, kind of uh, tensegrity structure, which is made of uh, those units connected uh, one another uh, through the uh, height of the structure. And the problem in 3D printing such a structure, this, uh, the, the generic unit is made of three bars, two bases, and a bunch of cables connecting. So three cross cables that here are not present. And uh, maybe the, the bases can be also uh, made of cables uh, eventually. But the problem with 3D printing is that this is a, a challenge that maybe the experts of 3D printing that are here uh, can help us to solve. So it's not easy to uh, 3D print a structure with internal pre-stress, with some, some internal pre-stress. Uh, so we, uh, we, we need to use two materials, maybe with a thermal mismatch coefficient, uh, mismatch of, in terms of the uh, coefficient of thermal expansion. And maybe in this way we can um, uh, manufacture an object in which there is some internal pre-stress. It means that the cables are stretched. So what we did so far, we 3D printed in, alum, in uh, titanium some uh, uh, samples, and we added, we, uh, we inserted some supports, and then we added, af uh, afterwards, we added the cables through a sewing process. We, we left some holes in here, and then we, we passed some cables through those nodes, um, and we made, and then after uh, passing the cable up, um, the cables we removed these uh, sacrificial supports. But it's a challenge to 3D print a uh, uh, tensegrity structure in, uh, uh, directly from the printer with bars and cables uh, already uh, in, uh, in place. Uh, at the end of the process. So in order to, uh, to apply after uh, uh, sewing, sewing those uh, sample with the cables, which were applied after the 3D printing, we, uh, uh, we uh, uh, attached the cables to some uh, key key guitars. Okay, the cables were uh, uh, run uh, up to a key guitar that was used to apply the pre-stress. Because basically a, a guitar is a, is a tensegrity structure, it's a kind of tensegrity structure. <coughs> So this is what we obtained for one, one uh, uh, single prism, but in the, for a, a column, we uh, uh, used this key guitar at the bottom. We, the, the cables were, uh, were run to a, uh, connected to this key guitar to apply the pre-stress. So the, the, this first presentation is about bridges. So we want to make bridges. Uh, uh, with the tensegrity architecture. We want to design bridges with tensegrity ar uh, architecture. And so from now on, I will use this notation. The uh, compressed element in the, in the tensegrity structure, there are rigid bodies and cables. Usually the rigid bodies are 
subject to compression uh, and obviously the, the cables are subject to tension. In a pure tensegrity structure there are no bending moments. There are only compressive and tensile forces. And there are several examples in nature of this. I don't know, maybe you have studied in some classes that nature wants tensegrity structures, wants tensegrity, because bending is not convenient. It's not really a convenient. It's a, a something that is uh, uh, convenient, maybe useful for, for engineering structures but nature prefers to avoid bending because bending uh, requires thicker structure. In order to give a, a thick uh, bending a stiffness to a structure you have to increase the, the thickness. So you have to make more massive uh, bodies. While if you use only compression and tension you can have more lightweight structures. And uh, for example there are mm, examples of uh, many examples the cells have been recognized to have a, uh, uh, can be modeled through tensegrity uh, architecture and also the, um, the, uh, the bones and the tendons if you think to our bones and tendons the bones are the rigid body and they are connected by tendons which are the ligaments our arms is a tensegrity structure in the end. And so uh, tensegrity is uh, 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 in nature and in our notation from now on the compressive rigid members are black solid lines and uh, uh, while dead side members are represented through red lines. If we have a superstructure super bridge with tensegrity architecture, we will have some arches that carry compressive loads, which will be the rigid members, maybe thick members, and we will have some uh, rays which carry tensile forces. And this is a, a kind of a superstructure bridge with tensegrity architecture. But we can have also a substructure bridge in a substructure bridge uh, the uh, role of a compressor and tensile member is exchanged. The arches will be tensile members and the vertical members or the rays will be compressive members. We can have both uh, architectures, superstructure or substructure. And we want to choose which one is more convenient. So Is it more uh, convenient to have deck arc arch bridges, substructure bridges, or tied arch bridges or superstructure bridge, which is more convenient? So we start to investigate on this problem with um, a, a basic module of a tensegrity bridge, and we employ a fractal. Uh, Al algorithm to generate shapes. We again use fractal geometry, this other uh, like in fibers, but this time in uh, for designing tensegrity. So we start with a module, a basic module of a bridge. This is a module of a sub superstructure bridge, and this is a module of a substructure bridge. You know. It's just a simple structure like this. In both cases, the, the deck is a tensile member. So we start with this, and we keep subdividing this element with the same, keeping the same shape. So we uh, design fractals, because the fractals are objects that are obtained by replicating a, a given shape. Uh, more and more at different scales through a subdivision, a subdivision, subdivision process. So 
what are the applications of the 10 consecutive bridges that we want to design? One a possible application is this, and is actually inspired by uh, an application in India that has been uh, uh, manufactured in India with a different, not, not a tensegrity strategy. So, to cover one possible, uh, why would you use uh, tensegrity bridges? First of all, because you want to make uh, lightweight structures, because as we, as I anticipated, the tensegrity architecture avoids bending, and so you get to uh, lightweight structures. This is a, a general goal that you uh, want to pursue. But you can also use this uh, uh, tensegrity because f uh, of another reason. In a tensegrity structure, if you release the cables, if you uh, remove tension from the tables, you release the cables, the structure can be, uh, can be uh, folded, can be folded. So the structure is deployable. You can also fold the structure and then by applying tension you can, uh, again, I will explain later, you can uh, uh, fold the bridge and then uh, you, you have uh, uh, removed the roof or uh, you have opened the roof or you can close this roof. Why you need uh, roofs for water channels? Because the uh, of insulation of uh, uh, sun, uh, the insulation process uh, produces the evaporation of water. And we have a dryness problem in the world. So uh, we want to uh, avoid evaporation in order to uh, keep water in the channel. So by covering, we, in uh, sunny periods, we can avoid uh, evaporation. Second, we can uh, cover with solar panels. With, at the same time, we gain solar ele electricity uh, from the sun, uh, conversion of sun energy into uh, electrical power. So we can, go, we can get both uh, goals. So how do you, uh, do, this was the motivation, the general uh, the motivation of the project. So let us describe our desi design philosophy. We have a basic module of a, a superstructure. In our design, we initially uh, contemplated both uh, modules, the superstructure and the substructure module. So we have a, a module, a uh, basic module, which uh, includes both superstructure bridge and a substructure bridge. So our basic module is, doing, is done like this. We have two compressive members and one ray and two uh, tensile members for the superstructure bridge and uh, similarly we have one compressive ray and uh, two and tensile arch and two uh, tensile members uh, forming the deck for the substructure bridge. And we want to design this uh, module uh, the best value of the uh, aspect angle alpha and beta are aspect angles of this module and the optimal values of the uh, self-similar subdivisions we can have a number of self-similar subdivisions of this basic module and this is another design parameter okay the number of subdivisions uh, uh, as well as alpha and beta are uh, design parameters and we can have also Q and P as the number of top and bottom radii as design variables. Because in this basic module, you can have more radii. You can have more radii. So this is uh, with one ra uh, radius. But you can have more radii, both here and here. And so those are other two design parameters. So those are 
this is a collection of shapes that we can obtain. Yeah, n equal to one, q and p equal to one. So remember, n is equal and this, the number of subdivisions. Q and p are the number of rays of the superstructure and the substructure. So this is n equal to one, q, q and p equal to one. n equal to one, q and p equal to two. Two rays. N equal to one, Q and P equal to three. Okay? Then you have N equal to two. So take this and subdivide this. So it means that you add another triangle here. See? You take in this length, you put another triangle, another triangle, another triangle, another triangle. And you go to N equal to two always having q and p equal to one if you take an uh, so you you put another triangle here another triangle here another triangle here another triangle and so on you go to n equal to three and you get all those shapes okay and those are tensegrity fractals what we call tensegrity fractals now, what do we want to optimize? We want to, uh, because all those designs are possible. Uh, how do we choose? We pick the best design. By minimizing the mass of the structure. Okay? So let's compute the mass of the structure. So the mass of the structure, in, uh, in which sense? We want to compute the mass of the structure that uh, uh, and uh, gives us the, uh, uh, the possibility to carry given loads without yielding or buckling of the elements. So the mass is the mass, the minimal mass for, given, for any given design, any given geometry. We, want, we can compute the mass of the bridge, which uh, uh, guarantees the fulfillment of buckling and, and yielding constraints. And that uh, mass is the mass, the minimal mass of that geometry. And we want to optimize the mass among all the possible geometries. So how do we compute the mass of a given geometry? So maybe I can need I So yes. But I think there is okay.
So if we did this as a parent, if we decide, this is the design for what? What is the mass? If we give this area to the cross section, which is the minimum, the minimum area required to avoid the other. If we give under that load, can this be the design load? The member is the area times the length times the density. So it's rho s the length and I put s. Rho s a s s, which is rho s. If I know the forces that are carried by the members, the mass will be the summation of rho B over sigma B, which or times length in the bar, summation of rho S over TS force times length in the string. So, and this is what is written here. So this is the mass. Summation rho over sigma. Uh, so it's rho over sigma. If we, we, are, we use a unique material for the bars and unique materials for the strings, this uh, terms uh, goes out of the summation. The summation of force in the i bar times the length of the i bar plus rho s over sigma s. Summation of the force in the i strings times the length in the i string. Okay. Yeah, it's all high, you can call high, it. it's just an index. Okay, this is the high number, so we call this I, and we call that I, okay, because this is the I member, it's the same. We call I. Okay, this is that.
So this is the M i on the E X E X member. The total mass will be the summation of the mass of the each individual bar, each individual string. We can normalize the mass, dividing the mass times rho s over sigma s. What are the dimensions of rho s over sigma s? This is a mass per unit volume uh, divided for if you multiply this quantity times fl, you get the mass. Because what is sigma? It's a force divided the surface. If you multiply force uh, times uh, a length, you obtain uh, the denominator, uh, you obtain a length and the denominator. So this is a mass uh, divided uh, volume. Uh, you, you obtain a, a length on the top. So in the end, this, is, this becomes a mass. So you can normalize the mass by this point, which is a mass. So this is a, a, a dimensionless parameter. It's just a normalization, normalization of the mass uh, divided by this quantity. And those are material properties. Rho S, Rho B, Rho C, B. We, uh, we will call Rho this ratio. Rho B over C, B divided Rho S over C minus and data. This other ratio. which will arise later because this design does not include, include buckling so far we are only we are only caring about yielding so uh, reaching the yielding stress of the member we will introduce buckling uh, later but if we want to design the structure in such a way that the members do not break we do this uh, sizing of the members. So in this way, if this is the ending stress, which is the uh, breaking stress, may be divided by a, a security uh, coefficient, we, we will design the bridge in such a way we have not breakage. Okay, we have not failure. This is a failure. Uh, um, this is a, uh, a formula for the mass. Avoiding uh, failure. It's very special. So, those are preliminaries. We compute the mass and we want to minimize the mass. Okay? Maybe the normalized mass. So, this is the mass of string. Under yielding constraint, okay, then you, you want. You can assume that the cross section is a uh, uh, is a circular, is a as a given radius. Then you uh, this is the mass. Okay, this is the mass of strings. Regarding the uh, which we have uh, already computed regarding the bars. Now we want to avoid also buckling, so we have to introduce a modification of the design formula for the mass in order to avoid also buckling uh, and not only yielding or uh, failure. So what do we do? What is the buckling load? Of the 
inertial uh, modulus times the uh, length squared. I the E here is a uh, cross section with the radius R B. This is what I just want to check. For me, we can leave this as an exercise for later. We can leave this, uh, or we can do this as a training. I can give you, uh, we can do this in the training time, because it will require some time. Okay, we will go through this uh, later. So. There are two masses that we can compute. We will see in the training uh, hours. One is the mass for buckling, avoiding buckling. So this is the radius that we have to give to the, to the uh, uh, member in order to avoid yielding. Okay? This we can check. This other one, will, uh, I will give you as an exercise. Okay? The bumping will give you start with this formula, which I give you. I will ask you to compute the radius of the member which I want bar. Okay? For the moment being I compute the radius which avoids yeah. So by applying K yes. What is K yes? The force divided by the sigma I go N I over which I call F B center I R D. Here it is the bar, the E bar or the F B bar. Okay? F B or F I divided by sigma b. But this is equal to pi ly squared. Okay? So what is ly?
Okay. What is the, which one you think has the greatest of the many? The, the minimum of the two minimum uh, radius. The minimum radius to avoid bugging, the minimum radius to avoid yeah. Okay. Which one you think? You have to take the minimum. Okay. the minimum mass to avoid both yielding and bucking. Okay. You avoid only yielding in the why don't, why don't we have buckling in the cables? Because we requires that the cables are only work only in tension. So basically we assume that the cables have a buckling load zero. So as long as they are in compression, they are not uh, working, okay? So the buckling problem is only in bars and not in cables. The cables are required to work only in tension. Okay? Indeed, if you make a 10 second structure and the cable goes in tension, it, you, you, the structure may collapse. You have to avoid uh, that, the, that uh, tensile members are in uh, that's why you pre-stretch the members in such a way that during loading you may reduce the, the initial pre-stretch but you don't go to compression otherwise the, the member will will go slack okay so now assume that we have a geometry hmm? this is the geometry corresponding to Q equal to 4, 5, five and uh, N equal to 1. What is now the point? Is that we assume a given force. We, uh, the, the, the bridge has to carry a given force. Okay? The total force that has to be carried out by the bridge, we leave it as a constant because that's a design parameter so that capital F is the force that has been that, that the bridge has to carry due to design uh, prescriptions so if we have n equal to 1 one half of the force will be at the mid span and the, and the other two uh, uh, okay this, this, there is a typo here we will have uh, uh, F yeah of our two F over 4, yeah, uh, this is true because we are uh, uh, assuming that this continues. So one half of the bridge of the force will go at the middle. So you apply this force, this other force will be, will be uh, the force at the, uh, will be uh, basically supported by the uh, rollers that are, uh, uh, don't, don't go, the part of the load that goes to the support does not contribute to the to the uh, mass of the structure. The mass of the structure is related to the force that goes to the mid-span force. So you apply this force and you, you obtain by structural mechanics, you compute 
the forces in all members. Okay? You, get, you have a given uh, loading condition, which is F over 2 uh, at the mid span. Okay? Then you uh, Then you uh, obtain the force. I want to remember the notation. Okay. Uh, you obtain the forces in all the members by equilibrium. By equilibrium. This is another exercise. So you you compute the equilibrium of the nodes and you obtain the forces in all members. Okay. If you start with this, you first impose the global equilibrium. Okay. And then you obtain those forces. Then. You, you go to this node and you compute the forces here and here by equilibrium. You have two equations and two unknowns. The global force is known by the global equilibrium. Then you go here, you know this force, then you compute the forces here and here, and so on. You compute the forces in all members. So for a given load that has to be carried, you go the force in all members. Okay? And by those formulas, you get the mass of that uh, design, okay? This is the idea. This is for a given geometry. And the, the mass will depend, will, will depend on what? Of a, an alpha and Q, okay? The number of rays, okay? We can add rays. We keep this uh, alpha, this pi minus alpha, pi over, over 2 minus alpha, and so we, we can add rays, and the, our mass for this geometry, which has, in which n is fixed, n is fixed, is a function of uh, uh, what? Of uh, alpha and q. And we can have the mass for yielding, the mass for buckling. Okay? And we can do the same for a super, uh, su uh, substructure uh, module. We give this force again. Uh, so those are the forces. So let, let's go back. Assume that you, you have the, 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 ma the force to be carried out is capital F, okay? You have F over 2 here, F over 4 here, F over 4 here. By global equilibrium, you compute those are the, uh, the reactions of the rollers, which are F over 2 and F over 2. You have to know a, a funny story about Indians and Italians. We are very similar many respects and there is one main difference that you when you shake your hand this way for you is yes for our for us is no so <laughs> when you make this during the lecture i i am i have the feeling that you are saying no that's wrong while well, uh, that's the main difference but apart from that we are very, very similar. And it's uh, strange that this, uh, some anthropologists should study the, the reason for this similarity between Italians and Indians, especially Southern Italians that, and Indians. We have several, several, I can tell, uh, similarities. So this is the idea. You take uh, the load, you compute by global equilibrium the reactions of the supports, and then in, uh, in the end, the reaction of the support will be F over 4. Okay? But this is because the force is uh, 1 half here, 1 fourth here, 1 fourth here, and then you compute the by sum summing those two forces, the reaction will be F over 4 uh, upward. Okay? Then you compute the equilibrium. Depending on the number of rays, you obtain a given mass. So this geometry, you have uh, inserting a, a, new, a given number of uh, 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 rays. In this, we, we have chosen that this angle is equal to alpha. alpha. The angle formed by the rays 
is equal to this angle alpha. This is a, ch uh, um, a choice because we were inspired by some uh, design by Mitchell, Mitchell trusses in which he assumed this angle equal to this angle. Hmm? Because it can be shown that this uh, gives you to the minimal mass. Okay, but for us it's a choice. So if you have a, so this is alpha, this is pi over two minus half, okay? If you have a more rays, you will keep this equal to alpha and you're just reducing those angles between the rays, okay? But for a given geometry, the general idea is this. For a given geometry, since the structure is uh, uh, statically determinate, so for a given geometry, you, uh, by applying the force that the bridge has to carry, you know the forces in the members, and by the formula, the design formula, you know the mass, okay? But this is always the case in bridges. Because you want, in bridges, you, want, uh, you don't want statically indeterminate structure. You want statically determinate structure. Why that? Because the statically indeterminate structure are sensitive to temperature changes. Since bridges are exposed to the uh, environment, to the external environment, you don't want statically indeterminated structure, and so you are always uh, led to a structure which is statically determinate, like this one, which was our choice. So we are examining these kinds of structures. There may be structures that we are not examining. In our, uh, we, we want to, de uh, to decide the minimal mass structures among all the ones that we are designing, okay? And we do the same for the sub substructure. Okay? This is the design for n equal to 1, p generic, the number of rays is generic, and q equal to 0. Q is the number of rays of, uh, uh, of the superstructure. Okay? n equal to 1, p arbitrary, the number of rays. And q is a 0 because we are examining only the the substructure. So this is the design of the uh, so this is the mass of uh, the substructure to avoid yielding and back. Now we compute which is less the mass of the substructure so the mass of the superstructure and we know which structure is, uh, is better. You know? But this mass is a function of uh, alpha and beta. Those two masses are, because obviously this computation of the forces depends on alpha and beta, you know? Because when you go to this equilibrium, so uh, this is a basic structural mechanism. But since we have uh, also production engineers that probably forgot about this, so just um, let's write it down. How do we compute the forces in the memory? I'll just give you a hint. I'll give you a hint that you will uh, you can do you can complete the computations yourselves. So it is to know we have two members. And we have a total force equal to F over four. Okay? We agree about that? We have F over 2 divided and, uh, and you subtract F over 4, you, you get that. Then you have to uh, uh, split these forces in this and this, in these two members. Okay? You do the polygon, you do the polygon. You have to liberate these forces to a force in this member, which is compressive, and to a force in this member, which is tensile. So this has to be equal to F. So this will be F, uh, not TS, this will be FB. Okay? This is alpha. So what is that for B? If you multiply uh, the
this confusing if you come to Italy you will see because for us this is no so if you ask to a girlfriend to a girl do you want to come with me uh, do, do you want to go out for dinner she say no maybe you go oh yeah no that means no but you can tell that with women no maybe it may, may mean yes okay that's another story but uh, the, the answer would be no then the no, maybe yes, it depends on that's something that changes case by case. So this mass depends on alpha and beta. So the mass of the superstructure and the mass of the sub... No, this is the equilibrium, the polygon of the equilibrium of the node. The, the submission of the forces must Go, must be zero. No, 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 no. no, no. that can be done through a computer, but you can do by hand if you are patient. And uh, you get the mass, which will be a function of uh, alpha and the number of rays in the case of the uh, Q. And uh, in the case of the substructure, it will be a function of, uh, of beta and the number of rays of the substructure P. Okay? Is that okay? This is the mass related to this candidate bridge. Now what we have to do? We have to determine to, to the best superstructure is the one which minimizes the qu this quantity for varying alpha and q. Okay? So this is the mass for given alpha and q. We first have to find the, the uh, for given n. So if we keep, keep n equal to 1, we can have the minimum mass for, of a sub, superstructure um, by minimizing this function that is an analytic function that you can compute. You can compute the derivative uh, of this function and uh, set the derivative equal to 0. And you can uh, search for the minimum value, the optimal value of alpha and p. Okay? And the same you can do for beta, uh, the alpha and q for the superstructure, and the beta and p for the uh, sub substructure. Do you have the general idea? And now we compare the two minima and we see which is the best. And this is for a given n. Then we want to repeat this for larger and larger n and see what happens. This is the general philosophy of this design strategy. 
And so those are the design charts that we get for uh, beta and alpha. You see, those are, this is the dimensionless mass as a function of beta, as a function of alpha. And the curves, the curves uh, refer to a different value of p and q. Okay? You see, there are minima at a given point. Those minima are the optimal configurations. And then you can get numerical. Uh, we have assumed a steel. We have assumed a steel for the for the uh, uh, compressive members and the uh, spectra, which is a, 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 a fiber used for for fishing uh, fishing uh, 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 devices as a tensile members. And you have the design for yielding and buckling. A general thing that you can say, if you have, uh, if you have buckling, those are degrees, those are degrees. If you uh, uh, do, not, do not account for buckling, okay, more or less the mass of the superstructure, the, the optimal superstructure, this is the optimal, super, uh, the optimal substructure, and this is the optimal sub, uh, uh, substructures. Okay, my student, uh, this is the superstructure and this is the substructure, okay? As you can see, the minima, the minima, more or less, have the same values of alpha and beta and give you the same mass, okay? So basically, it makes no difference in having superstructure or substructure. Yeah? Because the minimal mass you get is, is the same. Okay? It's exactly the same. It's more essentially the same. While if you include buckling, which uh, exists, we cannot uh, do anything about that. Buckling exists, it's a fact. So if we include buckling, we got. Uh, first of all, you see that you get much more, uh, much larger values of the mass. So accounting for buckling, you have to make the structure more massive. Okay, because buckling is related to bending. So when the member goes to bending, you know, what is buckling? It's uh, basically the, 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 the point, the value of the load, which induces a uh, uh, buckling uh, 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 mode of the structure, so a bending mode. So, in, uh, including buckling, we are led to more massive members. If, but this is the reality, we have to account for buckling. Buckling exists, and what you see is that it's much more convenient to have a substructure bridge than a superstructure bridge. It is convenient to have a substructure bridge with a very small value of beta than a superstructure bridge. So our response was, it's more convenient to have a substructure bridge. So the structure is uh, uh, below the uh, deck. This is the result. Indeed, if you see the, the, the bridges that are built in the, uh, with cords, you know, the, the Himalaya, uh, what, what are they called? The uh, Himalayan uh, bridges, the bridges that are built with cords, with cables, uh, the, that you uh, are sub substructure bridges, and uh, so the structure is uh, a system of cables going below the, the, the deck. And those are more convenient than superstructure bridge. So this is more convenient. Then, then we change then, okay? And we, we, did, we did it numerically. So this is always for n equal to one. And you see the, the uh, do you see what I, say, I said? Let's forget about uh, 
this is the best uh, uh, superstructure and this is the best substructure okay if you account for Buckley if you want a superstructure you will have this uh, like a fun shaped which is nice actually but the mass here is 21 the normalized mass of this is 21 this is the best design for a substructure accounting for Buckley why this uh, also the distribution of rays increases because alpha is different so if alpha is different alpha is different you fill the structure with rays you know because alpha here is increased close to 90 degrees understand why you have this fun shaped because this is the optimal values occurs for alpha equal to 88 which means that this alpha is equal to 88 is almost 90 degrees so you fill the uh, the superstructures we raise because also the optimal value of q is 100 so this is 21 but this one is 5 so instead of making this which is nice in the end <laughs> it's nice for this, uh, is a, the shape is nice we can do something much more convenient with much less mass with this simple geometry we put the compressive members cables 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 and we get much lower mass okay if you have yielding this is the the minimum mass if you have buckling this is the best superstructure this is the best substructure and you see the difference is quite significant okay but now we have to learn that architects do not care about uh, costs uh, usually the, the bridges often the bridges are designed by architects do you have fun of architects in India as an enge as engineers do you have fun of architects we have a lot of fun of architects in, in Italy because they think we think that they are mm, uh, yeah, more uh, star TV stars and then why we do the hard work and so indeed this is the case because the architects will design a bridge which costs which maximizes the, the mass basically which because if you maximize the mass you maximize your earning because the earning of the engineer of the architect is proportional to the costs of the structure so depends what you want if you want to maximize the mass maybe you go to this shape Th those shapes and then there are also aesthetic reasons for designing a bridge but if you just want to minimize the mass you have to choose to pick this ge simple geometry but this is only for n equal to 1 I was this n equal to 1 then we, we did the same for n greater than 1 uh, we obtained the formula for the masses for n equal to an arbitrary value we obtained the, the, the same design charts and uh, we added the, the and then you also added the we added the mass of the nodes because in this uh, summation you have to add the mass of the nodes and uh, if you add the mass of the nodes you you change and you will get the uh, the mass that gives you the this is without add of the joint so the minimal mass is uh, always uh, that of the sub substructure you see that the numbers are pretty much lower here than here this is the superstructure this is the substructure you just can look at, at the, and the, so it, it occurs for um, those are uh, a eta is that parameter that we uh, introduced before and then I am recalling now is this parameter that basically relates the the yield stress of the bars and the and the strings because uh, in, the, in that case that mm, 
if you include buckling, the result will depend on this eta. So the, the ratio between the strength uh, of the bars and the and uh, uh, this normalized quantity that depends on properties of both bars and strings. So let's go to this result. So it always uh, uh, you get always a minimum for uh, the lower values of alpha and beta. But if you add the mass of the nodes, you get a different, you get a minimum to a different n. So, so this is the value of n that gives you the, the optimal, uh, uh, because what we found is that if you, if you don't add the mass of the nodes, the, the optimal among n will go for n, will, will be for n going to infinity. If you don't add the mass of the nodes in the, the mass uh, uh, formula, you, you will get the optimum when you let n to change. You will get the optimum for n going to infinity, infinite subdivisions. But this is not true in reality because the nodes have a mass. The nodes, if you, the nodes are structural elements, they have a, their own mass. If you go for n equal to infinity, you will have infinity, an infinite, infinite large number of nodes. So it will be not convenient. So adding the mass of the node as a proportion in some formula, we got a finite value of n. And always the substructure more convenient than the superstructure. Those are examples of bridges that we have constru constructed. Uh, in a, uh, Robert Skelton has constructed, has built. And, uh, Yes, you can tell that they are very stiff bridges with very, uh, very light weight. So this philosophy lead you to, leads you to a very lightweight structure with uh, strong stiffness but lightweight. And this is, you can check Narmada Canal in India. This is a canal that has been built in India to cover uh, uh, a uh, channel, a water channel, from uh, the sun. And we have applied uh, that philosophy, the, the, the philosophy of the, the sign of this structure. In this case, we have sub substructure bridges, because uh, that's what you want. But we have a series of bridges. And you have all our design strategy that I have described refers to a 2D uh, structure. In reality, all the structures are three-dimensional, but you can design a three-dimensional bridge by coupling, by uh, inserting several 2D structures and connecting them through transverse cables. And those are, those, this is what we did through diagonal cables, you see? This is one bridge, another bridge, another bridge, and then we, we put diagonal cables connecting the bridges. And those diagonal cables also hold the sonar pa panels. Okay? Then you can, in this way, you can also collapse the structures by releasing the, the, the tension in, the, uh, in these uh, transverse cables. You can also uh, fold the structure and you can open or close this uh, bridge structure. And we determined the minimum mass accounting for the weight of uh, the, the total load, which was a function of the weight of the, of the uh, sonar panels. And we got uh, the ultimate strategy accounting for the mass of the nodes. We got the, the, uh, always, we got the, the, the uh, minimal mass uh, shape. We built an exemplary. Okay, and then we'll stop here because this, this uh, final part is not really needed. So this is uh, uh, our philosophy to design uh, uh, 10 bridges 
and we, we were able to show, in, we published this result, and we were able to show that uh, there are, there, it depends on if you use steel and steel or steel and spectra for the cables and the bars, and you have a, um, uh, uh, in, in the two different cases you have different optimal shapes, minimal mass shapes, and, but those masses were much, much lower than the masses of the uh, uh, real design that was employed for this application. That's why probably this structure was pretty costly. So that's why probably this example has not been uh, um, used uh, diffusively. This uh, 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 design has not been used diffusively because this structure is quite costly. So if you want to make this solution uh, convenient, you have to make the structure light. And, and so the, our 10 seconds strategy could lead to covering to roofs to deployable roofs of uh, water channels that is more affordable and convenient for, um, for practical applications. Okay, so uh, uh, we have to several lectures, but uh, today I don't know at the given point. I have three lectures and two and uh, one uh, sample to print. And, uh, uh, and then we have a break, okay? So we are left the final one. And, uh, or we can have two breaks. The only point is that we have to close it. We don't want to be too late um, with the uh, closing time. Now I think that we can do the second and then Uh, that's why I asked. Now, I want to show, since this is very, uh, it's a similar application, how we can use this uh, strategy to design also other structures, not only bridges. And so we can design any kind of structure. We can design domes, we can design uh, with uh, this architecture. And uh, in this particular, uh, uh, in this other application, so the, the, the problem is the same. That's why it won't be too difficult to present them. I'll show you one uh, additional application of this strategy, which is uh, pretty straightforward, so it won't require us too much uh, uh, time. So now we are. Uh, I want to apply this uh, strategy to reinforce or to build uh, from scratch a dome. Okay. Now we are, I want to apply this strategy for to domes. And in particular, we can, uh, we can apply this strategy also to strengthen existing domes or to build a new dome. We can do both. So the first uh, um, part of this presentation, I, I will very, um, will basically uh, uh, jump is uh, uh, about the possibility to describing a dome as a, a network of bars. So there is uh, uh, the possibility, we have uh, introduced the possibility, I, won't, I, w I will not present this part because it's mathematical, it's not needed for our purposes, but in this section, this part of this presentation, I'm showing how, how it's possible to represent a dome through a network of bars, because a dome is a, a continuous structure. Okay? We want to uh, design a structure which is uh, it's not continuous. It's made of uh, bars and cables. It's a, a network of members. 
And so in this first part, I am showing how it's possible to design a dome. Uh, it's possible mathematically, it's possible to design a dome through uh, compressive and tensile members. So it's possible to uh, uh, approximate a dome, a continuous dome, through a network of uh, uh, compressed and tensile members. If the dome is uh, made of masonry, what you will have with no reinforcement, you, you, you have to search for a structure that is made only of only compressive members. If you assume what is, there is an additional constraint now, if the, the, the dome is made of a masonry, you, you may need to only compressive members. Okay? But if you add reinforcements, which will be tensile uh, linkages, you can have also tensile members. But the, the, fir the first part is about the possibility to describe a vault. Like, so let's go to part two. Uh, is a, mathem is a mathematical uh, mm, uh, presentation of a theory that allows you to replace a dome structure with a, a dome, a continuous dome, through a network of uh, only compressive members if the, uh, the vault is not reinforced, or compressive and tensile members if the vault is reinforced. So we drop this first part, and we go to the first, second part. Now, assuming that you have a, a, a dome, and you, can, you want this dome, you allow for the presence of uh, both compressive and tensile members, the, uh, you can apply a tensegrity strategy to the design of the dome, because uh, you want to, uh, you may have a network of compressive members and tensile members that carry what the the, do the loads that are uh, assigned to the vault. The loads can be. In this case, it can be vertical or also horizontal if we have, for example, if we fear an earthquake. So we can design with the same philosophy as before, with minimal mass uh, and adding also buckling of the compressive members. We can design a structure that carries, a, a, a structure in space that carries uh, uh, the given load, a given set of loads with uh, minimum mass. And what will be the compressive and the uh, tensile members? Compressive members will be uh, part of the actual dome. We are uh, assuming that we are applying this framework to an existing dome, a dome that exists and we want to see if it is safe and how can we strengthen the dome, the dome to make it safe if it is not safe. So you will have our description of this world it will be a structure made of compressive and tensile elements. The compressive elements which will be part of the, of the masonry while the tensile members will be the reinforcement that we have to apply to make it safe. Okay? But we want that the, the minimal mass strategy tell us which is the best uh, strengthening strategy. Okay? So we will have a set of compressive members that are portion of the masonry where the stress runs due to the applied loads and tensile members that are the, the, the reinforcements that we have to apply to uh, make the structure safe. Okay, this is the idea. So now we did this. We did this in a in an uh, automatic way through a computer program because it was not possible to compute analytically the mass. Assume that we have a set of nodes. Okay. In our idea, the dome is just a set of nodes. We put the nodes uh, in the given geometry. Okay a set of nodes, a number of nodes, and you can have 
uh, in, uh, generally, you can assume that each node is connected to all the other nodes through a, a member that can be either compressive or uh, tensile. To simplify the question, the, the problem, we restricted the analysis to the, uh, this is a picture that is not, okay. Uh, we restricted the, um, we introduced the, uh, a radius of a connection, so each node is selected only to nodes in a given radius, of a ball in a given radius. So to avoid very long members, we say, no, we, we allow each node to be connected only with the neighbors in a given ball, with a given rad radius. Okay? We prescribe the radius of connection, possible connection. We don't allow that each node is connected to all the possible nodes. We allow that the nodes are connected to the neighbors within in a, uh, a ball of given radius. Okay? But we are not saying in which way it is connected. In all the possible ways. Okay? Then, among all the possible structures we can have all so you can connect this node to, to all the nodes that, that, that fall in this uh, neighborhood, neighborhood uh, sphere imagine that you assume a given connection pattern the, a computer can tell you for the given forces which is the mass that correspond to that structure, and then you minimize the mass among all the possible structures that connect those given nodes. Obviously, the datum of the problem are the forces applied to the nodes. The forces applied to the nodes in our strategy were vertical forces and horizontal forces which are proportional to the vertical forces. Because you know that in conventional seismic uh, design, you can have the seismic forces usually are uh, uh, proportional to the vertical forces. For example, if you fear a major earthquake, you can assume that the horizontal forces are 30% of the vertical forces, or 25%. This is a prescription given by the technical stuff. So we had, this, we had a bunch of nodes uh, on air, suspended on air, with forces attached to the nodes vertical and horizontal, okay? And then we want to examine all the possible structures that connect those nodes with a given restriction to, of a, a neighboring, uh, neighborhood co uh, constraint about the, the uh, radii, the radius of the uh, connectivity of a node to the neighbors. But we have only nodes uh, on, on air uh, attached uh, with the forces attached to them, and we want to uh, design the minimum mass structure that carries those loads. Okay, and this is a very simple strategy that gives nice results. This is what I am explaining. So this is the strategy. You, by computer, you examine all the possible connections. Okay, among the given nodes with the given uh, limitation, uh, yeah, the, you you can uh, you can restrict the connection radius. You can take this connection radius small or large, and so you have uh, different structures. And we want to take the minimum mass uh, structure among all the possible designs. And so we apply this to real uh, examples. This is a dome in a, of a church in Rome, in, in Naples. And we apply this framework. And under vertical loads, this is what happened. This is the minimal mass uh, network. So that carries the vertical loads with the nodes that were placed along the mid surface of the actual dome. This is a dome. We took the mid, no, the mid surface by, uh, by 
through an architect, give us the, the geometry of the mid surface, we apply to the mid surface weights, the weights that correspond to the self weight of the structure, and the structure that carries vertical loads, the, the minimum mass structure that carries vertical loads, becomes this one. And this is something that, that is known. So if you have a dome, no? if you have a dome and you apply vertical loads, assume that you are squeezing a, an orange. What do you do? You have a dome, you apply vertical load, and you squeeze. What, what happens? The, 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 the orange shell is, uh, 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 will show uh, fractures among the meridians. Okay, so in order, that's the, 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 what will happen. So if you need to avoid this uh, uh, cracking, this failure mechanism, what do you need to do? You need to wrap with the circular rings uh, along uh, meridians the dome. And this is what is found by, automatically by this procedure. So this procedure designs that those are rays are uh, the the, the uh, meridians are compressive members and the parallels are tensile members. This is the minimal mass, so it means that you, cannot, you, can, you can also put zero mass in between. The mass can run only along those members, this is the minimal mass strategy. Why you take the minimal mass? Because nature follows the minimal mass principles. The, the nature, in, in a masonry structure, the stresses do not involve the entire uh, structure. The stress runs in given directions. Which directions? We assume that those are the directions under the direction that give you a minimal mass structure uh, because this is what you can expect. Obviously there are, there are also heterogeneity problems, uh, there are uh, other facts to account, but at uh, the first, uh, the first uh, approach you can use this. And if you have uh, forces in the x direction, in this direction, then you have to apply reinforcement also diagonally. In this, if you fear forces in the x direction. But then what you want is to have a, a dome that is, uh, uh, can be exposed to earthquakes in x directions, minus x direction, y directions, minus y direction, because you don't know the direction of the earthquake. So you want a design that, that gives a, a, sa a safe structure for vertical loading and the seismic loading, for example, in two orthogonal directions with the plus and minus sign, uh, plus and minus signs in both directions. And this is what we got. If we, you got the, the, the minimal mass design for multiple loading conditions, because we generalize it, the, procedure for a single loading condition to multiple loading conditions. We have vertical load, vertical load and horizontal forces in this way, vertical load and horizontal forces this way, vertical load and horizontal forces this way. We have multiple loading strategy. We want the, the minimal mass among all the loading conditions that we are uh, examining with this buckling and the yielding constraints. We again have this design of cir circular uh, what is different is that now we, we will have rays, uh, compressing members also along the diagonals, but the minimal message will always be that of uh, uh, placing uh, tensile rings to strengthen the structure and uh, to protect the structure from horizontal force. So we have had through this uh, algorithm a, a strengthening strategy for, uh, for a dome. And we, we can apply this to other geometries. We can apply to a groin vault, and those are the reinforcements that are, um, that are needed for vertical loading. We can apply to a wall. This is a, these are the reinforcements that were needed do, through vertical force and horizontal force in a given direction. We, we compare this with a, with a uh, Mm, uh, results of uh, an experimental study. Uh, also, we can have a wall uh, subject to forces. This is a wall su subject to vertical forces and in-plane forces. 
in the forces in the plane of the wall. You can do the same for forces, uh, very horizontal forces acting orthogonal to the wall. And if you have your fearing forces in the plane of the wall, you have to have some diagonal reinforcements. If you're fearing force orthogonal to the wall, you have to have vertical reinforcements. Larger at the base and more thinner at the top. If you have a vault uh, so, uh, subject to vertical and uh, uh, ah, if you have the, also an entire structure composed of the vault and the supporting walls, we can apply this to the uh, complex uh, st uh, structural system formed by a wall and supporting uh, by a dome and supporting walls, and we can have uh, the um, uh, reinforcement strategy under vertical load and uh, under uh, vertical and horizontal uh, loading. Obviously, you can also uh, take this as a, as a, a design strategy of a, a new structure. You may want to, to uh, this, this can be the nodes in a, a, of a, a place along the mid surface of an existing structure, or are the nodes of a structure that you want designed by scratch. You may also apply this procedure to design a new structure and with minimal mass. And this is also another application of this minimal mass design strategy of the structure formed by tensile and compressive uh, members to domes. But we, you can apply to any structure. You basically, the idea was you define a bunch of nodes, you search the minimal mass structure that connects those nodes, formed by compressive and tensile elements. You can apply to any structure you want to shape. Okay, I think that now we can have some, we can have a break, 10 minutes break, and then we pass on the time.